Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. If there's a holiday, we've got a beer to match it. I dropped in at the Love City Brewery for a really fun collaboration brew for a good cause. Beer, the zoo, and lots of Christmas lights. I'll fill you in more later. That sounds like fun, Sierra. We're looking forward to more of that and more fun of all sorts here from the Free Will Brewing Company in Percocet, PA. It's What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tours and Board. Download the app. Partial funding provided through a grant from the Pennsylvania Malt and Beverage Industry Board. Hey, welcome to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack, noted beer authority. I'm Glenn Macnow, noted beer drinker. We're at the Free Will Brewing Company in Percocet, PA, where a guy just walked through the door and drove two hours to get one of their beers. Wow, that's pretty yeah, cool. that speaks well for Worth this Worth driving place. to. Absolutely. Um, first of all, it's the holiday season. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hanukkah is past, but we hope you had a joyous one. And that brings us to our beer trade for the day, Joe Sixpack, which is Hanukkah and Christmas beers. I love this one, yeah. the Schmaltz beer. This is not a 22 ounce bottle. Schmaltz, That's the name of the beer? Actually, it's Jubilation. Oh, ju <laughs> <laughs> I love well, it. I'll take that one to heart, Jubilation. That's exactly. a fine, fine Actually, they name. make another one, which is what I wanted to bring you specifically. Chanika Hanukkah, pass the beer. Oh, I like it. It's a great okay. name for a brewery uh, or beer from Schmaltz or up in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought you'd appreciate this one. This is a, a dark ale. It's brewed with chocolate. So. Now, not that I keep kosher or anything, but do we know if their beer is kosher? It is indeed. It uh, is. There you uh, go. Th their owner is a great guy. He's uh, I've had, had many beers with him uh -huh. and uh, he's kosher and he's got one of the greatest senses of humor and beer. So well, we're known for that, my yeah. people. Here you go. All right. Yeah, it does have a nice little little it, chocolate in it. It does. Um, a little Hanukkah gelt. Well, you know, I don't know if anybody else is making a Hanukkah beer, but, you know, it's in the spirit of the season because this whole Christmas beer thing really just began as a solstice celebration, and mm -hmm. it would make special beers for solstice. Later became Christmas beer, and uh, so I, I like the tradition. That's a winner. I'm glad that I you like that, and, yep. good, and good for Schmaltz beer. Yeah, I hope, as I said, Hanukkah is over, but I hope everybody had a good one. This, of course, our friends at Samuel Adams, Make old Fezziwig ale in honor of uh, Christmas Story and Scrooge's boss, correct? Uh, Christmas Carol. Christmas uh, Carol. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, I do like Christmas Story, though. That's yes. a fine movie. <laughs> Somebody should make Excuse that me. beer. Yeah, really. So, actually, um, they make a Ralphius here. I wonder if that has any relationship to this it. This is uh, ale brewed with cinnamon, ginger, and orange peel. There is a lot going on in this one. Old Fezziwig, right. he was uh, Scrooge's boss right. uh, when he was, uh, I guess, in his first job. Uh, uh, I think it's where he might have met his... Yeah, uh, it's got a nice oh festive uh, color That's to it, doesn't it? It's a beautiful beer, it yeah, really is. That really is. So, yeah, it's nice to see this beer. This is a hard-to-find beer, so thank you very much for bringing uh, it along. Please, I knew what you want. You know, it talks about those spices, but really, this is just... Anybody would love this beer. Uh, yeah, but I, I get that I'm a fan of cinnamon. I yeah. get a little cinnamon yeah. out of that which is nice, a little orange peel. That's, yeah. uh, that's a nice beer. So I brought a bunch of other ones here with me uh, today. Uh, this, nice. from, uh, this is a citywide barley wine from St. Benjamin, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of more, to me, a, a beer that you would drink by the fireplace, maybe at the, at the end of Christmas night. Uh, this is Love City. Uh, they make a heat miser. Really, <laughs> I tasted this at the brewery. One of the better Christmas specials. Yes. Heat miser, cold miser. Really? What? Yeah, I don't know that oh, special. Yeah. Oh gosh, yes. That's oh. one of the, it's one of the great old. I'm forgetting the name of it. Okay. 
Right. Say again. A year without a Santa Claus. A year without a Santa Claus. There, there you go. go. Wow. It comes from above. Yes, <laughs> exactly. it's a great Christmas uh, little uh, movie, cartoony. Thing. Workhorse. Their Imperial yep. Stout. We've had really their nice stuff. Bit, right. Uh -huh. And this is two special ones from Cape May Brewing, which I was really uh, excited to get a hold of. Bowels of Barley, great name, and they make two different versions. One's bar uh, aged in Scotch barrel, and the other is aged in a whiskey, or rather a, a cognac barrel. So, but I, I brought one other thing for you, Glenn, that yeah, I really want to You never heard of the heat miser and the cold miser? I'm sorry. Where did you grow up? <laughs> Again, I'm the Jewish guy. I know all that. Maybe all right, you also said, yeah, you said you have something that I, right. you think I'm going to like. So I'm friends with Doug Marchikaitis, who is the brewer at the Iron Hill in Chestnut Hill. Okay. And he mentioned that he had made a uh, fruitcake. And it's made I'm with... I'm not big on the fruitcake. It's I made gotta with be the fruit... Yeah that was in a Randall, which is, uh, for those who don't know, is a- Former Eagles quarterback, great no, era. not quite, not Late quite. 80s into the 90s, <laughs> ultimate weapon. He was, but yeah. this was this is a that different Randall. Nothing to do with him. Randall okay. is when you put spices or fruit or something into a container and run the beer through it to add the flavor. So they did it's that. It's called a Randall. Okay. It's a Randall. Yes, right. it's a right. name that came from Dogfish Head, and they ran this Reindeer's Revenge through the fruit. Can I just drink the beer and not eat the fruit? Well, cake? pour it in there for us. Okay. And you try the, the fruit that was oh, actually infused with the beer. So, all right, uh, come are on. Are you Glenn. a fan of the fruitcake? I am. I actually am. Really? Yeah. You're the one? I love I mean, it. I always buy into the joke that there's one fruitcake in the world that just keeps going around I, from person to person. Until it gets to me. It's I an use old joke. I, I like gosh, it. Gosh, so. okay. I'm sure I like the beer. All right, give it a shot. See all how right. it goes. All right. This is the, uh, the a, a guy made this, right? Yeah, yeah. He's right. Not, so I don't want to pick on the all right, guy. Yeah, don't all right. pick on him because he said, as he said, he's a brewer, not a baker. All right, here we go. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Glenn. Give the man a break. No, oh, it's really terrific. I, I love it. Hold oh, it. I so love it. Maybe here. the beer can. Yeah, I'll eat it. a little more. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. All right, I'm keeping the rest for myself. <laughs> oh, boy, is that good. Mm -mm. All right, Glenn. Maybe next can time. Can I praise uh, his beer at least? You can. The beer is terrific. Reindeer's Revenge Reindeer, is yeah. a Belgian-style triple. I think revenge is the key there. <laughs> anyway, that's great. All right, coming up, we got some newsing. <laughs> Please. Newsy notes. No, it's great. Uh, some new breweries that are opening and a big settlement. If you're a PBR fan, good news. It's not going away. From Iron Hill Brewing Company. And no, we're not at Iron Hill. We're just eating their fruitcake. Excuse me. From Free Will Brewing Company in Percocet, where they don't serve fruitcake, but gosh, it's all great. Uh, he's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, this is What's Brewing. Why walk? When you can fly. I'm on Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack now. We're at the Free Will Brewing Company in Percocy, where I am enjoying their fine IPA Brut. All the better to wash down that delicious, <laughs> delicious <laughs> fruitcake that you gave Please. me in the first segment there, Joe Sixpack. Please, that beer, that, that fruitcake was the essence of, of the, the winter holiday to me. Yeah, sure was. <laughs> anyway, listen, our, our partner, Monco Makers, we're very proud to be with them. Uh, and Valley Forge Tourism. They recently had a beer tasting event and a fun one at the Elmwood Zoo called Wild Lights. Take a look. So we are here with Eric, Director of Operations at the Elmwood Park Zoo. And can you tell us a little bit about tonight? I mean, this is really important for the breweries, but also the zoo. Absolutely. So we wanted to host something in addition to our Wild Lights event. It's a very family friendly, light event, but we wanted to complement the experience for our older crowd by bringing in some local breweries, some wineries, and some distilleries, just to give them a little enhancement to the event and really make it a lot more fun and interesting and just have a good time with it. And we like to stay local, so it's a, it's a natural fit for us. We have a traditional Oktoberfest style beer called a Martzen. Then we have our Imperial Red Ale. Both were brewed for the Monco makers. 
Um, so we did it all in conjunction, so we're, we're proud to bring them here. Not only did visitors have a chance to do a tasting tonight, but also to experience the wild lights. Uh, this year with Wild Lights, uh, it's the first time Elmwood's ever done anything like it. We hired an awesome partner in uh, GES to do all the lights that you'll see throughout the zoo. Uh, and we have a great partner in 1SEO who actually was the title sponsor for the event. So it's, it's, it's an awesome group to come together to put something on pretty amazing. Valley Forge uh, Convention and Tours on Board has been an awesome partner with the zoo. Uh, with events like uh, Monco Makers, with all the different things they do for the bridal expos and just bringing tourism to our, to our county is instrumental to the growth and, and sustainability of the zoo. Guys, this was a great way to promote Monco Makers here at the zoo. For What's Brewing, I'm Sierra Genst. That looks uh, like a great time and I'm sure all those animals enjoyed all that beer. They should. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Contract and Brewing Company, part of that, we're very proud to be part of that with the Elmwood Zoo in Norristown, which is a really fun place if you have little kids. It's a great kind of smaller zoo that right. you can en enjoy with the kids. Um, okay, so we are right at the Christmas season. Uh, we've done a lot with Christmas beers, but what I've also noticed now, more and more populist, popular, beer decorations, beer-related decorations <laughs> for the holiday season. These would be decorations that you make while drinking yeah, beer? Well, or? you could do that, yeah. That would be okay, or you buy them or whatever. And I have one that a guy made uh, and sent it to me, one of our Facebook friends of What's Brewing, Ted Suda, if I, I hope I have his name pronounced correctly, made this from the Sly Fox Pikeland Pills can. Oh, that's a can he's cut yeah. up, yeah. Cut it out of a can to be a hops. A hop. Uh, yeah, yep. and uh, hung hop that nugget. on the Christmas yep. tree. That's Isn't that pretty? pretty? Cool. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of creativity. Yeah. Man. That's a lot more work than I could. Yeah. Do, right. A really? lot more handy. I like, I like that. Be. I like that. Uh, along those lines, uh, somebody made one out of Russian River caps. Russian oh, River, those of are course. Caps, right. Yeah. It comes in the bottle, but it has the caps at the top of the bottle. Right. Actually, there's right. more. I see a. Well, I can't read it from here. Okay. But it's, that's a pretty good idea. I like All right. that. So here's another thing, and this this is going to become problematic because really, just until recently, most beers was sold in bottles now like this fine one they're mostly sold in cans not mostly yet but they're it's getting there i think well i know what i want for the holiday season and yet another year passed without me getting it which is one of these babies a fine map of the state of pennsylvania where i can put Geez, I don't know. That's got to be more than a hundred different bottle caps. It's right up there, man. There's a lot. And I so, also noticed these are not all Pennsylvania beers because no. I see Sam Adams and Miller Lite and so I on. I see but Labatt's Blue in the middle yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you I could. Labatt's was made in uh, Latrobe for a while, so maybe oh, it's a right? Pennsylvania okay. beer. Okay. So. But anyway, I think these are great. You said you have one of these. I have one from New Jersey. You don't live in New Jersey. No, nah, but I well at one time at one time I was the uh, director of the That's Brewers right. Guild there, there so go. I got it for that, and it has exactly two caps in it because, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, most of these brewers out there are using cans, so I I couldn't find caps. But for this it. seems I I used to collect license plates from different states because I lived in a lot of different states, but this. <laughs> this seems more worthwhile to me. I would hang one of these in my den. Yeah, it's a good little gift. I like it. All right. So, so how about you? Um, what are you getting me for Christmas, Glenn? <laughs> oh, it's a little bit of a short deadline. Hey, <laughs> listen, I got you, my friend, a nice Saison in the key of life because All I know right, you're, you're no, a big fan thank of you. the really, Saison. A lot of thought went into there. Yeah, I, like, I appreciate lot, it. A lot of thought went into that. Yeah, you know. All right. Anyway, coming up, we said there is some news going on, some newsy notes that affect the beer world. We're going to tell you all about that. We're at the Free Will Brewing Company, where, I, you know, this is an impressive place. You took the tour. It's really a lot yeah, going on here. Really. Uh, and we will tell you more about that on What's Brewing. company based out of Chico, California, reached out to brewers around the country um, on Facebook um, and requested that 
we all participate with them in brewing a beer called Resilience Boot County Proud IPA. Um, so that's what we're doing here today. It's just going to be a classic American IPA. Um, we actually got, Sierra Nevada was able to negotiate donations of the ingredients as well from a lot of malt and hop suppliers. So we'll truly be able to donate 100% of the proceeds to the Campfire Relief Fund. So Glenn, these collaborations are fairly common in the beer world, but I don't think I've ever seen one quite this big. I think more than a thousand brewers nationwide wow. did this. Uh, and we had, in addition to the Love City one, uh, brewers in New Jersey got together uh, at the uh, Eight and Sand Beer Company to do it. And this one just really took off uh, in an amazing way. I was really impressed by it. I think it's great. Um, listen, more and more good companies in every business are getting involved in civic events, in charitable things, and so on. When beer makers can unite over something like that, I think it's it's terrific, and this was this was good. Yeah, absolutely. So I spoke to Chris Collier from Roy Pitts Beer uh, Brewing, which is in that uh, Northern Liberty section, not too far from Love City, and he told me a little bit more about the uh, collaborative effort that went into this beer. In the brewing industry, competitors actually work together a lot in this industry, and this is a great example. Uh, what happens next after this beer is uh, is brewed here at Love City? So after the beer is brewed here at Love City, they're going to personally distribute those beers to a couple key accounts here in Philadelphia, people that they like to work with, brew pubs, breweries, and then we are all going to take the proceeds from those beer sales and donate them directly back to the wildfire uh, proceeds. So Glenn, resilience. Butte County Proud IPA, that's a mouthfeel yeah. that will be uh, available uh, in at key accounts and at the breweries that were involved in it uh, throughout December. Uh, it's coming out this right. weekend that we broadcast. Uh, so, Good, and good luck to everybody out there. All right, let's get into some news that's going on. Um, there was a scare, and I don't know how real this was, Joe Sixpack, or how contrived it was, but... Um, Coors Light, no. uh, Miller Coors, excuse yeah, right. me, Miller Coors. and the Pabst Brewing Company were involved in a lawsuit that they ended up settling recently under which apparently the whole hipster brand of beer was in jeopardy and claimed yeah. that the bigger brewer, that Miller Coors, was trying to put it out of business. Yeah, I mean, co yeah, color me dubious on this one because I do think it was a, a much ado about nothing. Uh, Miller has brewed... PBR for years. It's brewed all of, uh, as far as I know, all of Pabst brands. They have a lot of beers out there. Does it own Pabst or no. it just has contracts no. to brew? No, it's a separate company that owns Pabst. The Pabst Brewery, you know, great classic old brewery in America. It existed for over a hundred years, yeah. but it, it closed the brewery in Milwaukee and then it's contract brewed its beer okay. at various Miller locations gotcha. over the years. They had a contract that was going to expire next year. Uh, Miller was making noise about this, that they didn't want to make it anymore, and so there was a big lawsuit, and it put the scare into all these hipsters who like PBR. Correct me, I, I am uh, <laughs> not a legal scholar as you. I know you have two uh, degrees in law, but <laughs> I'll ask you, under what does Miller like have to brew their beer? No, I didn't get We're it. We're done brewing your beer. I we mean, don't want to. I mean, I don't get it. I not to side with Miller too much here because you know I don't really trust right. them that yeah. much either. But but the fact like is like the little guys. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you know I don't see how they had been obligated to brew the beer. Although I will say you know PBR was uh, making some uh, allegations that they were trying to kill them so that that Miller could sort of replace them in the marketplace somehow. How but much, how much is, how big is Pabst? How much of a marketplace is Pabst? It's a pretty good size. I mean, it's actually, they brew more beer than any microbrewery out there. So, I mean, I think they're even bigger than, say, the Boston Beer with Sam Adams. Wow, really? So, so they have a pretty good amount of beer that gets and out there. And their, their hipster run kind of continues? Yeah, it's, it's been it, going on for a lot of years. I mean, I, I remember first jump the shark about it in like 15 years ago right, that this okay. was a thing. Hey, so. whatever you like, you like. I'm yeah. not going to yeah. pass judgment. All right, some other things going going on in town. More new breweries. Yeah, they keep happening. Uh, so there's two new breweries that are opening, or they will be have just opened by the time we broadcast this. Uh, one in the Kans Kensington section of the city, very small, Sacred Vice is opening up, uh, up there in the Kensington area. And then another one in Montgomery County in the North Wales, uh, in North Wales, 
called McAllister Brewing. It's actually in the, in the location where Prism Brewing used to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they've renovated the space, and uh, I'm looking forward. Well, at, while I taped this, I'm looking forward. Uh, by the time this comes out, I will have already visited. Wow, time travel with yes. Joe Sixpack. <laughs> um, of all of the new places that open, because they open, they open, they open, how many of them last three years? What percent? I think most of them do. Most of them Most do. of them can get through. It's, it's that, it, the problem where uh, the new breweries have is when they want to grow up to be a larger brewery. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money that's uh, spent on that and uh, you know a lot of risk. But I think when you start out as a small brewery, you should be able to survive for a little while at least. Okay. Um, and we haven't hit that bubble yet. I ask you this question all the time. I don't think there really is a bubble. I really don't because I think most small breweries will stick around because they're only really only serving their own local neighborhoods. And you know, what's so hard about that? You know, it, it's when they really want to get bigger. Yeah, okay, good stuff, good stuff. Could always use more good beer, that we know, speaking of good beer. We're getting it here at Free Will Brewing Company in Percocet today, coming back. We are gonna to talk to the founder. Yeah, and I'm looking oh, forward to that. Maybe we'll run some of this past him too. There you go, right here on What's Brewing. Why walk when you can fly? I'm on fly. my wings and let it ride. Spread my wings and let it ride. I'm on fly. Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. Welcome back to What's Brewing with the Free Will Brewing Company in Percocet, PA. I got myself a Lord business. We are here with the founder of Free Will, John Stemler. John, thank you so much for having us. Tell me a little bit about this and then the much more interesting beers <laughs> that you and Joe Sixpack have over there. Well, Lord Business is a nice double IPA, uh, rather crisp and dry. Still uses some of the piney and fruity hops that everybody likes. That is my but speed, my man. I love that. The, the label looks like you in your <laughs> 20s. No, not so no, much, but I, but I appreciate it. All right, what's going on here? You guys have a nice uh, couple of uh, fruity cocktails here. That are we, go, are we going a, on a cruise, or what are we doing? That is a red beer. <laughs> so this beer is a collaboration with our friends at Imprint. Uh, we brewed this here and canned it. It's called Juice Money. Uh -huh. It is a kettle soured beer that we put a load of black currants and plum in, and then we spiced it with cinnamon, cardamom, and vanilla. And it's very, very full-bodied with a lactose addition. It's almost not beer. Yeah, I would say yeah. a red bread is, uh, is the color there. But, you know, you can do a lot with beer. Imprint uh, in Montgomery County is doing a lot of interesting beers. How did you hook up with them, by the way? Uh, they, I think I met Ryan probably at the homebrew store and then very early on when we were still in the basement here. But what was the breakthrough for you? Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who are going to be watching this show who say, I brew my own beer and I, you know, maybe I can rent out a little space and I can try to sell it. What was the breakthrough? How did you know when, okay, we're going to, we're going to be successful at this? Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> but you did make a big jump. I mean, uh, I mean, that had to be a, a daunting challenge for you. Absolutely terrifying. Yes. Well, you obviously make a lot of styles. Joe Sixpack is sitting there drinking what appears to be a banana daiquiri. What, what, uh, what is that? Pretty interesting beer, uh, Glenn. Tell us about it, John. Well, this is another uh, collaboration with our friends at Imprint. We brewed this over there. This is called Hop Nugs, and it's got Galaxy, Citra, and Mosaic hops. And uh, what's unique about this beer is that we didn't follow a lot of the traditional rules of, rules of brewing. We actually did a short mash, uh, a short uh, Vorloff to clear out the grains, and then we did not actually boil this beer. So normally you would boil a beer because there's a matter of contamination and everything else. So how, you know, why did you not boil this beer? Well, we wanted to keep some of the starch and some of the protein and some of the sugars we didn't want to get any more complex, which happens during the boil. You also drop out a lot of different uh, novel flavors and also you sort of thin the beer out a little bit and actually increase the color of the beer. So this is Hop Nugs. I imagine that you're not going to package this in cans or anything. This is in this current form, no. But uh, in the future, in 2019, I think we're talking about doing a little more of it. So you got to come here to Percocy or to your spot in uh, Lahaska. I guess uh, the folks at, at Imprint will have it. So 
this is a really fine little uh, tap room here. A lot of activity here. Tell us a little bit more about what goes on here in the tap room for visitors. Well, we are open uh, every day, Monday through Friday. Um, we, we open at 3 o'clock, and then Saturday and Sunday we open at 12 and 11.30, respectively. Mm -hmm. We just started doing brunch on Sundays with our uh, food truck tray that uh, comes here pretty regularly. So you're going to do a, uh, this, this uh, episode is airing on a Saturday on the, I guess, the 15th, and the next day, if you're watching this uh, on a Saturday night, come here on Sunday and at 11 30 you get to sit with santa claus and have some beer with santa wow. claus the santa claus the right? santa claus the actual santa, santa, claus. santa claus he's pretty busy this time of year he is that he can carve out a morning for you is pretty impressive you had said earlier you said we're doing the sours and the new breakthrough kind of things so what are the next what's the, what's the next generation what's the next things coming through well i think that would be your your brute ipa there mm -hmm. I, I think that is the, yeah, the like next that. evolution of ipa uh, how is it different well, it had, it's still low bitterness, but mm -hmm. it's super dry, like the traditional West Coast IPA that much. most of us fell in love with. Yeah. But without all the bitterness, which right. I the, think is not the hoppiness yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the, the the program downstairs with all the soured beers too. I mean, that's still, as you said, your passion. Oh, absolutely. You really get to know a beer if it's in a barrel for three years. And <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> I guess you would absolutely. I, I did have one last question because we mentioned this uh, in, uh, going into this. You were asking about the bubble. What's your thoughts yeah. about that? With so many breweries out there, you've been out here for seven years. Uh, what's your look at the future of beer with all these breweries that have opened up? I wouldn't call it a bubble. I think we describe it as a slow bleed. Interesting. <laughs> so people are going to disappear slowly? And slowly, yeah. What's the biggest challenge for a new brewery? Just, you know, to stick it out. Um, proper expectations. Meaning that, you you know, in terms of the growth? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of room in your local market. You can't out local local. Right. But as soon as you get into packaging is really where the challenges come in. Um, packaging beer is very dangerous and harmful to the beer. Just oxygen alone can kill beer. So being able to package beer so it can ship even across town is, is a challenge. Making sure you invest in the time and equipment to do it really helps with quality control. Well, John, thanks so much for having us out here. We've really uh, enjoyed our time and certainly have enjoyed your beers. Yeah. Uh, Joe Sixpack, before we go, it is time to revisit our brew down, our IPA brew down. We started with a field of 16. We're down to the final four. The final four, and the first matchup in the, that bracket was between uh, the Central Pennsylvania IPA and the Philadelphia Suburban IPA, which was Trogue's Nimble Giant versus Victory Dirt Wolf. And this was the absolute closest one of the entire brew down. One vote separated here at Glen. It was amazing. And uh, it's, uh, Trogue's Nimble Giant will be moving forward into the final. Uh, we'll be revealing next week. Wow, okay, there you go. They could be the champion IPA of Pennsylvania. Uh, John, thanks so much for having us. We enjoyed it. Joe Sixpack, we will see you next week. And everybody, thanks for watching What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Mongo Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tours and Board. Download the app. Partial funding provided through a grant from the Pennsylvania Malt and Beverage Industry Board.